The Voting Rights Act of 1965 prohibits discriminatory voting laws. But in recent years, many states have passed voter ID laws that some say can suppress voter turnout. Stricter ID laws, they typically hurt minority populations more than anyone else, and they hurt uh, underrepresented populations more than anyone else, social economically disadvantaged populations more than anyone else. And so it feels like people are being targeted about what, with these laws, and I think uh, we should make it easier for people to vote, not harder for people to vote. After an appellate court found Texas's voter ID law discriminatory last year, the legislature passed Senate Bill 5. The new law allows voters to use a variety of documents to prove their residency status if they've lost their ID or have been unable to attain one. Still, opponents of the law say it goes too far. I think making sure that every single Texan's right to cast their ballot is protected is more important than chasing this imaginary boogie boogeyman of voter fraud. During a recent debate at the LBJ Museum in San Marcos, Texas State students engaged in a spirited back and forth. On the in the 2016 election, it was not illegal voters, but foreign adversaries perpetuating influence campaigns that had the real impact on our presidential election. These areas could be buttressed without silencing the voices of legitimate American voters. Supporters of the voter ID law don't think it's too much of a burden. Rather, they see it as necessary to ensure the integrity of our democracy. The only thing that we care to do is uphold our, our democratic system. And with races expected to be close this year, maybe closer than they have in the last 10 to 20 years, this matters. With even a few hundred votes able to sway an election, we should do anything that it takes to safeguard our elections against this kind of fraud. So if you're a registered voter in the state of Texas and you're looking to vote in this election, make sure you bring a government-issued ID like a license, passport, or military ID to the polls with you. For Bobcat Update, I'm Adam Smith. For most Texas State students, walking up the hill to class is a rite of passage. But for some, the trek can be far more daunting. It's kind of awkward having to step aside and have people pass me while I'm having an asthma attack. I feel just, it's just really awkward just to have people pass me and be like, what is this idiot doing? It's just a looming presence that just kind of follows you everywhere. It literally sucks. It sucks the air out of me and it sucks my money and it just sucks in general. The last time I went to go buy an inhaler, I went with my mom, thankfully, so I didn't have to drop $250. According to the CDC, around 12% of American adults suffer from asthma. The Student Health Center recommends students reach out to their insurance companies and manufacturers for possible discounts on inhalers. They also work with students to manage their asthma symptoms and any other related health issues. It just gets really difficult to cope with anxiety and asthma. I think they kind of trigger each other. That's probably the main cause of my asthma attacks, just stress-related stuff. There's no point in worrying because it's not going to get better. It hasn't gotten better. So I just try to <laughs> laugh it off and cope with it that way. For Bobcat Update, I'm Adam Smith. There's, there's not much about the job I don't enjoy. All right, go for it. Whether it's reading the news or going out and interviewing people, I've enjoyed it all immensely. Good afternoon, I'm Will Wadsworth with your 5 o'clock news update. Hayes County is preparing for Veterans Day commemorations and celebrations this weekend. The county's biggest event will be the Veterans Day Parade in downtown San Marcos tomorrow morning. I always ask myself, why would someone care? Why does this matter? Um, we start off with kind of just seeing what's going on locally in San Marcos, or sometimes I'll check my email, we get sent press releases if I see something big going on, or just word of like mouth if someone tells me, hey, this is happening, then we'll just investigate it. And there's a difference between tuning in and just hearing some monotonous voice rattle off whatever has happened today, and hearing someone who is making efforts through their voice, through their tone, through the words they choose, through the syntax, through all of it, to convey a certain level of, of humanity. The Boys and Girls Club of South Central Texas in San Marcos 
is one of only two in the nation that has a charter school. Elise Pierce has the story. Uh, KTSW was, was something of an, an impulse decision at first. Um, I switched to electronic media um, fairly early on in my freshman year and, and decided if I was going to make that jump then I may as well find some sort of practical immersion within the field. I want to stay in Texas too. I hopefully I get to stay in Texas, but I understand that being in TV news and being a reporter, you can go anywhere, and I'm dedicated and willing to go wherever. And I think that no matter where I'm at, it'll be an adventure. So I'll just go wherever the reporting job takes me. You can find more news online at ktswblog.net, or you can follow us on Twitter. For KTSW News, I'm Will Wadsworth. Thank you for tuning in. While swimmers enjoy the clear waters of the San Marcos River, something troubling lurks below. Invasive fish like the Placostomus, an algae-eating catfish, have made this their home by muscling out the natives. When they're introduced to this area, they don't have any natural checks or competition, so their populations or numbers grow much quicker than the native species. The issue concerns locals because many think of the river as a second home. Having it overrun by other populations would be really sad. I wouldn't come here anymore, and I don't think that the people in the city would come either. Often these fish are dumped in the river by aquarium owners, but city officials say it's a better idea to take them to the Discovery Center on Riverside Drive. And what that also does, as well as provide a location, is it gives education and outreach and lets the public understand some of the problems that the river faces and uh, hopefully prevents future aquarium dumping. But it's not only pet owners who've caused this problem. For years, the owners of the Aquarina Springs theme park at Spring Lake also introduced fish to the ecosystem. They were exotic to uh, the people that operated the park. They thought they looked really interesting and cool. Texas State's Meadows Center is working with other organizations to keep the river healthy. For the last couple of years, there's been a habitat conservation plan through the Edwards Aquifer Authority. They come out here and we try to restore this area to as close to the natural condition as possible. These efforts should keep the San Marcos River pristine for generations to come. For Bobcat Update, I'm Adam Smith.